distinguished academicians and researchers, dear professors, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to be part of this conference where I will be presenting our paper, Secure Matrix Operations for Machine Learning Classifications over Encrypted Data in Post-Quantum Industrial IoT, which is a joint work of Artrim Chamili, Albert Levy, Arkay Savash, and Osman Berke-Gune, all from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Sabanj University in Istanbul, Turkey. Unlike privacy-preserving machine learning training algorithms, privacy-preserving machine learning classification algorithms, as the name points, are concerned only with the classification stage. In those scenarios, as it is the case in our paper also, there's a server that owns a trained machine learning model and wants to keep it private. And there is also a client or clients that wants or they wish to classify his or their queries and in the process, they want to keep the query, the intermediate results and the final classification results private. Throughout the years, especially in the last few years, there have been, there have, uh, have been several such privacy preserving machine learning classification algorithms, but almost all of them have one or more drawbacks, which will be, which will be addressed briefly in a while. Another remark is that several machine learning algorithms such as deep neural networks or support vector machines, logistic regression, naive bias, and so on, can be expressed through matrix operations or linear algebra operations, if you wish, such as uh, inner product of two vectors, matrix vector product, uh, matrix matrix product, and so on. To this end, uh, initially, we propose novel secure matrix operations based on arithmetic circuits as our building blocks. And on top of those blocks, we construct novel privacy preserving classification schemes for few machine learning classifiers, such as support vector machine, machines, logistic regression, and naive bias. In the process, we set strict privacy, security, and efficiency goals, such as total privacy of the trained model, total query privacy, finally intermediate classification result privacy, and there are other properties as well, which will be elaborated in the upcoming table. Since our underlying uh, cryptographic primitives are shown to be resilient to computer attacks, to quantum computer attacks, that, may, that means that our schemes are also applicable to the post-quantum world. It has been shown that our theoretical analysis and, and extensive experimental evaluations show that our schemes outperform the state of the art in terms of computation and communication costs, moreover, they also show better security and privacy characteristics. Thus, this makes our algorithm suitable for devices with limited resources that should satisfy some strict security and efficiency properties, which are over often require requirements in the modern day industrial IoT. Uh, in this table, we compare uh, several schemes, including our scheme, in terms of different uh, security, privacy, and efficiency properties and characteristics. Now let's go with the preliminaries, namely with naive bias. We are dealing with the multi-class uh, scenario where we have C classes in our case. We have N features. All of the features are sets, which can take uh, values from their corresponding set. Uh, then we, for the naive bias, we have the class probabilities and conditional class feature value prob probabilities for all classes and all feature values of all feature sets. Uh, thus, all of those probabilities form our trained model. So if we have an unclassified query given with this vector, uh, which has n entries, and each entry is basically an element of the corresponding feature set, then we classify this query X according to the trained model M, thus the probabilities, by assigning the labber or the class which has the higher posterior probability, basically. If we define um, variable F, which is basically the sum of the cardinalities, the number of elements of all of the feature sets, and furthermore, if I define the parameters of each of my C classes in this way that in my first index of this raw vector, if I put my class uh, probabilities, proceed it by conditional class feature value probabilities in order for all feature values and all feature sets, then 
if for all of the classes, if I kind of stack up those uh, um, system, propa those probabilities of those classes, then I have a matrix, which basically I'm going to call my trained model. And for each class, basically in each row, it has those uh, parameters or probabilities related to the classes. In similar fashion, let me redefine this query vector for the naive bias, naive bias case in, in the case where in the first index I put one, proceed it with all of the feature values of all of the feature sets in order, uh, such that if a certain uh, index of the original, if a certain entry of the original um, query appears in this extended or redefined uh, query vector, its value is going to be one, otherwise everything is going to be zero. In that case, this formula over here or the classification of this unclassified query X can be expressed in terms of matrix uh, column vector multiplication. As a result of this metric and column vector multiplication where the column vector is this redefined X for user query. So as a result of this matrix and column vector I'm going to have another column uh, vector, which basically are the posterior probabilities for each classes. And I'm going to find the maximum of that. Well, that's my final classification. So I'm doing it in terms of matrix operations. I'm just going to copy paste this formula because I'm going to need it later on for support vector machine and logistic regression. So let's see what happens over here. So for the support vector machines, we have F features. All of the features are basically feature sets, uh, and they have their discrete values that, that can take, if a certain data set is continual and can discretize it. I have also C classes. And for each of those C classes, basically I have a hyperplane for the support vector machine, uh, which is given with those weights and the bias in the beginning. Okay, so basically if I have C classes, I have C such hyperplanes. Now, as I did with naive bias, if I stack those hyperplanes, those uh, raw, vectors basically, I stack them up. Uh, then I'm going to have my trained model for the support vector machines, which are the weights or the hyperplanes for each of the classes. Now, if I have a query, which looks like this, then I'm going to classify it in similar fashion by multiplying the, the trained model with the column vector query X and, with, and the maximum in the column, the resulting column vector is going to be basically my classification. Something similar happens with the logistic regression during the classification stage. So in the classification stage, they have all the same four, but they differ in the way that the trained model is obtained during the training phase. But in the classification stage, they have the same form. However, this formula over here classifies only one query. Now, if I have Q queries, vector, the column vector uh, queries. And if in a way I stack up those query vectors now, I just merge them and I have the query uh, matrix S, the queries matrix S, then I'm going to classify each of them using matrix matrix multiplication because it's going to be a matrix. Basically, I'm just illustrating it with uh, this image, and this is for the naive bias case, but it's also applicable to the others, the support vector machine, namely. Uh, so this is my trained model. The uh, parameters for each of the classes are raw vectors. And those are my queries, Q queries. They are column vectors. Uh, so when I'm going to multiply the matrix with each of those columns, I'm going to get a certain column for that query. And in that column, I'm just going to find the maximum value of that column, which is the final classification of that corresponding query, which corresponds to the, uh, the index of the query. Somewhat homomorphic encryption, those are public key crypto systems and they allow homomorphic encryptions on the ciphertext, which means on the ciphertext, we can process data without decrypting them. And the operations that we can homomorphically do on the ciphertext are additions and multiplications. The plain text and the ciphertext are on those uh, schemes, somewhat homomorphic schemes are polynomial rings, uh, such that their coefficients are integer, integers modulo T and Q respectively. Now, if we choose 
the polynomial modulus n and those coefficients t and q in a wise manner, then this will allow us to have to opt to do SIMD operations over the polynomial coefficients, which are given, these are the operations that we can do and they're illustrated with this figure over here. So basically if I have a ciphertext AC and those are the coefficients of that ciphertext and other ciphertext BC, those are the coefficients. If I add those ciphertexts, actually it will be translated into component wise addition of the corresponding of the ciphertext, okay? And this is for addition and something similar happens with multiplications, with the multi multiplying two ciphertexts. Basically this is SIMD multiplication over here and something similar happens also. And we also have the rotation, the possibility to rotate or basically shift the indexes of the ciphertext. So here, if I rotate or shift by two, five was an index one, but now it's going to be an index three in the shifted or rotated ciphertext. This is all done homomorphically on top of the ciphertext. Now we go with our proposed uh, building blocks. We encode our matrices in two way, raw wise encoding. So we put raws one by one, first raw, second raw, or we can do it with column wise encoding. So we encode each column, first column, second column, and so on. Uh, our first algorithm is secure sums of blocks. Basically at the end of this algorithm, we find the sum of these slots, of slots of blocks of these slots, and the sum is put in the first slot of the corresponding block. So basically, the sum of those integers is put here. Then the sum of those integers in the ciphertext is put in the first block over here and so on. And all of this is done in log D additions and rotations. Ciphertext replication. So basically we, this is illustrated in this figure where we have a ciphertext with D data slots that we are interested in, everything else is zero. And we want to replicate it by R times and R is the replication, right? Well, this is how I do it. And the, at the end, we'll have those, these lots rep replicated by four times. Uh, the next, okay, this is all done in log R rotations and additions where R is the replication rate, as I said. Secure dimension replication. So if I have a matrix, which I've encoded in this way, let's say raw uh, encoding, it can be done in column also. At the end of this algorithm, that is, it is illustrated in this figure. Uh, if I have dimensions D1 and D2, two for rows and columns and the replication R rate is R4, basically the rows will be re replicated each of the rows four times in the resulting ciphertext at the end. Then we have dot or inner product of two vectors. Uh, basically what I do, I just multiply the vectors in SIMD fashion and I find their sum with the first algorithm that we just explained. Matrix vector multiplication is done by, so I have as an input of a matrix and a vector. The vector is replicated using the ciphertext replication algorithms we just explained. And then the resulting, uh, and that this result, the resulting of the first line basically, uh, going to be multiplied with the matrix using the secure dot product to get the final result. Finally, matrix, mat matrix multiplications. We have two matrices. One is raw encoded, the other one is column encoded. Uh, the first matrix is replicated by corresponding number of, uh, by suitable number of weight, re replication weight. The second matrix, its dimensions are replicated. And then the resulting matrix is kind of our, uh, the, the, we find the secure matrix matrix pro multiplication product by multiplying the results of the first two lines. Basically what we do here, all of the integer multiplications of the matrices here are done with a single SIMD homomorphic multiplication. Secure random ciphertext is not, it's part of another paper. Basically here we have data slots, which are kind of sep uh, separated from each other by NS or D data slots and we kind of randomly replicate them according to a certain random vector. This is how it's illustrated. And this is the shown in details. Now, of course we have the inverse ciphertext permutation, which basically is trivial if we have those uh, parameters. Secure comparison, in order to compare two numbers, A and B, 
which are encrypted, I just subtract A and B, then multiply those with a random R and add a random H, such that this R is greater than zero and the absolute value of H is smaller than R. And this is all done in SIMD fashion. So this is how I co compare multiple or N numbers uh, in simultaneously in SIMD fashion. And this is secure comparison of all data starts. So this is the algorithm and these are, which is taken from one of our previous papers, which is cited in the manuscript. Uh, just to illustrate it, this is what we do. So we have those data, which are uh, apart from each other for, for these lots. And we just, we want to compare each of other, each of them which, with each other. And in the end, we have the secure comparisons for all of them. And in the process for the secure comparison, we use the secure comparison protocol that we just explained. So this is secure comparison of all data slots, which are the data slots which are inter we are interested in and they are separated from each other by NS or D slots. Finally, we go to our algorithm, which is secure machine learning multi-query classification. In our scenario, we have a server which has a train model, but it resides on the client side in encrypted form. And the server has the decryption key, while the clients have queries that they want to classify in privacy preserving manner. All of the constituents, participants basically, are in the semi honest model, which means that they follow the protocol, but on the background, they try to infer some data that which, which they are not supposed to do. Just to refresh our memory, I'm going to write again this formula for multi query uh, classification. Basically, M is my trained model, and S is uh, the set of the queries. Trained model is shown over here. Queries are those. Q queries are uh, those vertical columns. And after I multiply them, then I perform those RGMX. Uh, basically, I find the maximum for each of the, of the uh, columns in the resulting uh, matrix after I do the matrix matrix multiplication. So let's go step by step. Initially, my IoT devices, Internet of Things devices, generate the queries. So they generate those in the first step, X1, X2 to XQ. In the second step, basically, they kind of merge those columns as it's shown over here in this piece of block to form the matrix of the, col the, the, the query matrix S. In the third step, I actually execute all of this part, but everything is encrypted. So the queries in the first step encrypt their data, they, they aggregate it in the second step. In the third step, then while they are encrypted, homomorphically, I do the matrix matrix operations, which is shown over here, preceded by SCOTS, secure comparison of all data slots, which is basically for RGMX purposes. So this is in the third step. The output of this guy then is set on the fourth step, while I randomly permute the ciphertext using the ciphertext permutation protocol that we explained. And this randomly commuted ciphertext is sent to the server. The server has a decryption key, so it decrypts it and sends back, sends back the decryption of the randomized uh, results to the clients. And finally, all of the clients perform the inverse ciphertext permutation to get on plane to get their final classification results. Okay, so theoretical analysis and comparisons. Uh, for matrix, secure matrix vector and secure matrix matrix uh, purposes, I compare uh, theoretically the number of operations with uh, two of schemes, state of the art schemes, which are known to be among the best, and basically we outperform those two. Uh, we also do we also do some experimentations, actually a lot of experimentations with. And this is my experimental environments. And for a benchmark evaluation and comparison purposes, I'm using those two data sets. Uh, and finally, those are the results. So for both naive bias, support vector machine, and logistic regression in both computation and communication cost, our schemes outperform the state of the art ones. As for the security analysis and proofs, we give a formal proof that our schemes are secure under the semi-honest model. For a detailed, uh, for the detailed formal proof, you can check the manuscript. And thank you for your attention. Looking forward to your questions.